And that uh, brings us to the very, very crucial question of trust. Yeah. Uh, and that question has been asked a lot this week. Uh, in fact, to also uh, all the leaders, to uh, Vikram Misri, a foreign secretary, to Jay Shankar, a foreign minister, they haven't really given answers on that. Obviously, don't, don't blame them. Uh, you know, if my information isn't wrong, and this would be quite iron- ironical, uh, PM Modi and G met in October 2019. uh in mahabalipuram uh this was at a time when china was you know making some noises about the abrogation of article 370 and this sort of summit was seen like you know okay hey okay cool they've met you know again handshake uh, stuff is cool yeah. between the two uh kalwan happened literally the next year uh the massing of troops by china happened a few weeks before that you said uh at the beginning of this episode that not beginning towards the middle of this episode that what happened in 2020 with uh, china sort of you know increasing its troop presence along the rsc was a very political decision and has to have come from the leadership of china so i'm not sure if it was planned when ji was meeting pm modi but i'm mean, guessing with stuff like military it has to be planned yeah. a few months in advance so obviously this was going on when he was meeting pm modi now i'm not saying that he has some sinister motive uh and when he met pm modi in in in, in russia but then how do i know hmm. because what's ha- what happened then Correct. in 2020 yeah. right yeah. so how are india and china ever going to bridge this divide whether at the political level or even more crucially at the military level because what you've described right now me bringing back my troops for so many kilometers is on the assumption and the faith that even you are doing that yeah if i pull back 6 kilometers and you pull back only 1 kilometer and you can reach that point in 5 minutes and i can reach it in maybe 1 hour then bro that's bad for me yeah. so i'm going to take all the precaution i can to ensure that you know it's really happening so how do you get around doing that see the good news is i think trust is a highly overrated virtue uh, and uh, some of the finest experts in the world uh, believe and i agree with them uh, that that uh, in smart geopolitics trust is not even a consideration mm. uh, you know y- using trust to bridge gaps between countries is unsustainable uh, unreliable uh, and w- will never allow you to sleep at night uh, you know in singapore uh, the, the government there doesn't trust that people will not litter it imposes uh, uh, you know the absolute assurance of a terrible fine mm. on them in order for them to comply with that Uh, and the singaporean people do that and i love that example because most people make a big deal out of how it's in singaporean culture to be clean and not litter it's not that it's naked fear of jail and uh, you know losing a lot of money that uh, you know makes it part of your culture uh, so uh, the 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 reason i take that example is because india doesn't need to trust china uh, you know we've we've heard we've heard the army chief we've heard many diplomats and experts say oh trust is a problem oh we need to rebuild trust oh but trust is an issue oh, trust deficit to bahut zyada hai and i i i frankly uh, kind of balk at that because i think why do we need to rebuild trust why do we need to rebuild something that is never going to be rebuilt uh, you know china has been a treacherous state since since time immemorial and especially in the context of india and i don't mean this in a with any malice i mean uh, as a country that works unarguably with self interest it does not uh, put a high premium on being honorable hmm. uh, as far as trust is concerned uh, it works and functions only based on self interest and an aggressive self interest uh, and if its enemies Uh, you know put a high value and premium on trust then that's their problem that's how china sees it 1962 war 2020 galwan all of them are live examples of either our lifetime or uh, the last century where uh, where trust has blown up in your face in this country so uh, now if if the lack of trust between india and china was a was a you know a, an absolutely essential ingredient to moving forward then i would have been a very worried person right now but i'm actually comfortable with the lack of trust because i believe that the glue to the two countries being held together uh, is not is not something as wishy washy and uh, kind of uh, you know unstructured as trust ultimately what is trust you know why should why when people say why should india just trust china something in the back of my head is going why should china trust india <laughs> why should china trust india and i mean it as an indian i'm saying why the hell should hello why should china trust india because we are also an ancient civilization because we've been very honorable in our commitments which we have mm. 
India's track record compared to China is there's no comparison in in terms of India's commitment to protocols, India's adherence to international regulations. There's no comparison. India has always been an extremely trustworthy, reliable, uh, you know, force. No matter what, even to its adversaries, even to Pakistan, even to China. But when you're at war, when you're competing for regional hegemony and influence, why would you trust the next guy? Yep. Your dynamic with that country, the, and, the, and, and this brings me to the fact that the dynamic between India and China needs to be what I call mutually strategic dissuasion, which basically means that it is in my interest not to mess with you yep. because I know what's going to happen. And it's in, in China's interest not to mess with me because they know what will happen. And there lies the peace. There lies the military equilibrium. There lies the whole delta of each side not messing with the other. Okay, and stability comes from that. If, if there is a mutual understanding that, boss, it is going to serve nothing at all if my military goes against yours or yours against mine because we are both equally powerful. Brilliant, I don't need to trust you. I, I don't have to trust that you will do something devious because you know what will happen if you try anything. So forget trust. Trust is a non-essential uh, ingredient in this entire thing. But confidence building measures will have to be there. Uh, you made a very important point of how do we know that they're going to keep their end of the bargain and actually de-escalate and de disengage. How do we know that's going to happen? Again, there is trust does not even enter the picture here. Yeah. All of these things have to be have to be corroborated through satellite picture, pictures, intelligence, verifiable and agreed modalities of proof. Again, India is not like, Acha, uh, oh, you promise you've done it, promise you've moved the troops back. Okay, okay, then now we can move to the next point. It's not happening like that. There are there, there India's got satellites, India's got intelligence, India's got planes to conduct its own verification. So so we should we should actually be really happy that trust is not a uh, not a sticking point between the two countries. Of course, trust is a desirable. Yep. But but believe me when I say that trust can't be that first step. Our focus right now can't be on trust because it is too uh, it's too incoherent a uh, entity or or a quantity to actually be able to uh, you know put too many resources into going after. Put your resources into creating strength on the ground, creating those uh, protocols for the resumption of your uh, of your patrolling in Demchok and Depsang, put resources into uh, what the new rules of engagement are going to be for those patrols. There, fr from that will flow the stability and the peace. Mm. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I don't trust you and you don't trust me. Yeah. And when trust ceases to matter, the, the two countries move to an entirely higher plane. Mm. And then maybe trust will actually evolve, not in our lifetime, but maybe, you know, in the future generations, the stability between India and China has reached such an extent that trust has become part of the culture. Mm. It's it's highly possible. The, the, the statement made by uh, Xi Jinping, you know, most people think of these statements made at these bilaterals as, ha ha, kisi ne aise likh mm. But if you look at each of the words and the things that he uses, and this is, I'm granting this is a country that is very conniving, very sly, plays mind games. Mm. Two ancient civilizations, you know, convergence of cultures, the acknowledgement of, uh, you know, looking at the historical trends, working together. Let's discount everything that's going on in Xi's mind right now. But I'm saying those are important words. It, 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 it provides a glimpse into the yeah. mind of the Chinese as to where they are approaching this from. And it's not from a... It's not from a position of saying, hey, let's trust each other. It is out of, uh, I think, a, a, a sudden dawn of respect, uh, uh, an acknowledgement of having underestimated India, mm. most definitely an acknowledgement of having underestimated the Indian army and the Indian military at large, and therefore saying, okay, now let's talk. Mm. That's what this is. Mm. Strength only respects strength when it comes to China. 